Hang on to your seats to find the one who can save the human race. One man does not exist. Hello everybody and welcome to my talk show Rut Cat Fitness where we talk about fitness and dieting and looking good and feeling healthy. Talking to myself. But that's okay because a lot of people do that. So in this episode, it's all about the proteins, protein powders. I will tell you everything you need to know about protein powders or everything I know at least, which is a lot because I have been eating protein powders for years, consuming them since I don't know when, I guess like college, probably college when I could afford my own stuff. So first, let's go to say the top five reasons you should have protein powder. Reason number one, weight loss. It's a weight loss supplement by, it works by suppressing your appetite. So if you restrict your calories because you're trying to lose, lose weight, it's gonna agitate you and reduce your serotonin levels, thus making you feel less happy. And that's when supplements come in, especially protein powder. Reason number two, it is supplement two meals. So if you're eating or you need to eat a lot or you need to eat less, you're gonna have to prepare the food. There are a lot of unhealthy snack choices, but protein powder, that is a healthy snack choice. So consider it a snack, consider it a healthy meal after our dessert, but don't consider it only eating protein powder. You still need regular food. So reason number three is convenience. Convenience means that whenever you are traveling, whenever you are busy, whenever you're on the go, you can have a bag of protein powder. You can have a scoop of protein powder that's going to help you feel better, give you nutrients, and it's gonna be easier to consume than food. Reason number four, anti-aging and longevity, longevity mindset. Is it the mindset or is it real? Is it facts? There have been groups of people discussing protein powders for anti-aging. And how is that possible? Well, there's a whole science behind it, but uh, this is just going to cover a brief part of it regarding nutrients and generally nutrients make you feel younger, feel better and healthier. So reason number five, it is an immune system booster. So science and some studies show that protein powders as opposed to like carbohydrates and fats boost your immune system. So don't forget about that. It is a good choice. There is actually an Italian proverb from the city of Florence long, long time ago. And it is said that if everyone were raised on whey, doctors would be bankrupt. Is that true? I think it is because, you know, doctors like to prescribe medicine and only focus on treatments after getting sick, not before. So let's start uh, talking all about this stuff in detail. I'd like to say one more thing about the top five list. I have I'm number six, you could say, and that is protein powders and milk are alternative. So if you have issues, allergies, lactose intolerant, you can use protein powder for whatever reason you would normally use milk for, like coffee, like desserts, and you won't have the lactose issue because protein powders, they filter out lactose. Now, before you start taking supplements, before you start taking protein powders, I highly recommend getting a comprehensive blood test. It's called the comprehensive lipid panel test. It includes your LDL, HDL, that means like the high-low cholesterol levels. And other parts of the blood test will include in the lipid panel test, yeah, you'll have a few tests and it's inexpensive, uh, maybe like 30 something dollars in the US, uh, but other places have been also range in that price range. So just a quick blood test 
and it's highly recommended so that way you know where you started and then you can get one after exercising and do, uh, consuming protein for some extended period of time and then you can compare your own results I did that I mean I had a blood test I usually try to get one once a year to see uh, any changes in progress of my lipid panels and I can say my cholesterol is pretty good I did have at some point uh, one level a little bit higher but that's when I was consuming lots of eggs on a daily basis including the yolk so I've reduced the amount of yolk I've been eating and yolk is not the healthy part the white is and the yolk contains fats even though it has some protein the yolk also has fats and high in cholesterol so if someone says oh I eat a lot of eggs like me that doesn't mean that you should also eat the yolks and which I don't next thing is let us discuss the actual types of whey proteins out there or just protein powders in general uh, first the whey whey consists of protein lactose fat and minerals it is generally derived from milk that's the most popular one but there are also proteins uh, derived from hemp from soy from peas from eggs and maybe a few more that are much less popular and inefficient but those are those milk hemp soy pea are some ones that you can buy in stores so now let's talk about the differences in proteins you have to really know in detail what protein you're going to consume because there is a whole variety and it is absorbed differently and contains different uh, ingredients different amino acids so that is important to watch out for and I'll tell you how to watch out for that uh, the most basic protein the whey protein concentrate it's going to say probably not on the main label but like if you look at the nutrient information on the back label it will say if it's a protein isolate protein concentrate and the long time ago when they first started making proteins the the actual protein percentage in there was low like 40 percent but nowadays it goes up to 80 percent of protein so those are considered the uh, protein concentrates and concentrates they filter out lactose and fat but not at a high degree not at a high level uh, so the next type of proteins that are better are going to be the protein isolates so isolates are the ones that are going to be over 90 percent protein and have a minimum amount of lactose and usually no fat so, and, and then the third then the top which is debatable if it's the best or not or the most efficient is hydrolyzed protein that's the most expensive one and it's hydrolyzed it goes through a chemical process that's different and has the pros and cons the pros that it absorbs faster uh, than regular protein but it is uh, it's denatured meaning that the filtration process had to have acid and low temperatures to filter that one study shows that does not improve synthesis, protein synthesis in the body. Uh, I tried it once before and I didn't notice like a huge difference, but of course it's not easy to tell the difference right away. So it's not, I would say it's not worth the money to pay extra for hydrolyzed, but definitely whenever you can go for the protein isolates. Now let's discuss uh, what else after whey. You have soy, you have casein, you have egg proteins, and I'm going to tell you the difference with those. With whey, you have the general amino acids, essential amino acids, also referred to as BCAA, branch chain amino acids, leucine, isoleucine, valine, those are the common ones. With casein, you have uh, increased, or you have more, there's histidine, methionine, and phenylalanine. Those are additional amino acids that are available in casein. Then you have egg uh, protein powder is known to have all nine essential amino acids. I can tell you I've tried whey, egg, casein, soy, which is my least favorite. Uh, but if you can't have milk products, then the hemp and the soy and the pea proteins are gonna be 
your choice of protein and probably a little more expensive too uh, generally if you look at uh, boxed products like on the shelf and markets the pre-made drinks the they typically contain the soy protein I, uh, of course there's some studies showing that it's not recommended for males to have soy protein because some kind of uh, estrogen increase so, uh, I mean I read some studies and could be true uh, I certainly wouldn't depend I wouldn't doubt choose soy to be like my first type of protein uh, but if you're vegetarian if you can't have lactose you can't have milk products and of course that's going to be your choice all right now let's discuss uh, the texture and the taste of the different proteins uh, since whey is the most common one the most popular that's because it's a, there's a reason for that and it does absorb quickly it does uh, blend it does, it's soluble it's water soluble so when you're putting in water or milk you can quickly use a spoon to swish it around and it's gonna dissolve so it's not gonna be very clumpy and when I'm in a hurry I just put the scoop of whey protein in my mouth with followed by a gulp of water and that's usually enough but uh, it's not so true with casein with casein uh, that is going to be a thicker texture a little bit more rough uh, less tasting uh, but there's a benefit to that uh, it's going to stay in your system longer so that there's another term called fast versus slow protein and the difference is that is the absorption and how long it stays in your system so whey is designed and recommended before and after workouts and that's when it works best to replenish your nutrients since you had a hard workout your body uh, uses up those nutrients and needs more that's why you need to recover faster with protein whereas casein and say for example if you're trying to build muscle gain weight gain mu uh, muscle mass it's recommended you have uh, additional protein uh, during like sleeping because that's your body still burning calories and a casein is going to stay in your system longer it's going to be slower absorbed slower and uh, prevent your muscles from breaking down uh, so what else with uh, those types of proteins uh, you can buy mixtures of proteins um, the egg protein which I've tried is also a different texture it's it's pretty much just like uh, if you take white the egg whites whip them up they become fluffy and then if you were to dry it it would probably be like a powder fluffy powder and uh, it's gonna have some kind of salty flavor to it the with the brand I bought it was uh, not a good taste it just tasted like egg whites with some salt um, so it's not recommended to for flavor for sure but then again you don't want to choose whey strictly on the flavor because usually does that is made up of like artificial sweeteners and sugar and extra carbs which you don't want if you're trying to lose weight uh, but still it has the nine essential amino acids so you can kind of like save money if you buy the egg protein powder you won't need brand chain amino acids uh, on top of that so I, I actually used to do that I you I would have uh, protein powder and then on top of that buy amino brand chain amino acids and like have that during a workout you know which is fine uh, because when you're working out your blood rushes uh, to your muscles but when you're eating when you're digest digesting then the blood goes to your stomach so it's gonna have uh, effect adverse effect on your workout uh, so that's why you shouldn't eat like right away uh, during your workout before your workout you should eat uh, amino acids consume amino acids during your workout so it doesn't digest like you would have food or whey protein uh, but if you manage your eating and have consistent habits then you won't need brain chain amino acids uh, since you're going to have protein uh, but that's for another episode brain chain amino acids can be discussed in on their own in separate lengthy time so let's discuss let's 
say the next thing on my mind or in my notes uh, yeah, for choosing those type of proteins. So I went over whey, soy, casein, and uh, what it contains. Now when you buy the proteins, you have the options. You can even buy a mixed protein brand. Uh, if you say if you need casein at night and then whey during the day, you're gonna have to buy two separate co proteins. But you can also buy like a brand I tried and I liked myself is the Trutein brand, T-R-U-T-E-I-N. That protein brand has a mix of casein and whey. So that's, uh, that's going to be a factor of your schedule and the amount of money you want to spend on proteins. Uh, so let's consider the serving. Let's consider like the cost. Because proteins not the same everywhere, not the same price. Uh, it varies. Different stores, different countries, uh, different brands. Generally, a scoop is 30 grams. If I recall correctly, on labels, around 30 grams or one ounce will have some carbs. Uh, it's rare to have a protein powder without any carbs. It's going to have at least like maybe two to four grams of carbs. Uh, but generally make sure you have in that so one scoop you have around 24 grams of protein so that's going to be uh, more efficient so you can get a good protein brand and some you can buy that are like less than 10 grams or like this the protein bars usually have a lot of carbs and have about 10 grams of protein which i don't recommend don't do that it's not good for losing weight uh, definitely get one with low carbs and low fat but uh, focus on that one scoop around 24 grams of protein uh, which is similar to say getting food like a chicken breast or a fish fillet uh, what else maybe like a uh, couple eggs so if you remove egg yolk from egg it's going to leave you about four to five grams of protein. So if you take um, five eggs, you have about 20 grams of protein. And then if you take a chicken breast, uh, say, I think six ounces of chicken breast will be about uh, 25 to 30 grams of protein. And let's let's compare the prices here. So if you buy a container protein, say it's going to have 30 scoops, 30 servings. It's going to be a cost of fifty dollars compare that to uh, the chicken breast that's gonna be maybe three to five dollars depending how you buy if you buy it cooked or raw uh, but with that chicken breast the difference is there you have to prepare it you have to cook it and then when you consume it it's gonna digest slower than the actual protein powder uh, so doing the math uh, it's, like I said it's gonna depend on the cost of where you buy it because outside the US, since protein is mostly popular in the US, that's where you get the best prices. But outside the US, uh, other countries that protein is not so common is going to be more expensive, especially with like shipping costs that you have to ship outside the US is going to increase the price. Um, but yeah, so consider the conveniences. If say chicken is cheap in your country, like when I was in South America, I can get a whole ro entire rotisserie chicken for less than $5. That way, for I would have like one chicken breast would be about three or four meals, and that the way that way I didn't need protein powder because I would have that uh, chicken breast the snacks throughout the day, and the uh, protein powder in that country was more expensive, so it was more cost effective for me to have the actual chicken, rotisserie chicken cooked and ready. Yeah. So let us uh, consider what else should we consider about protein. So we discussed the uh, amount per serving, 30 grams of per scoop, uh, 24 grams per serving of protein. And that's why you gotta read those back of the labels because they're not always gonna be uh, the same. Each brand, each company might have different amount of grams per scoop and then if you compare like the scoop you might miss a few grams and not pay what you expected per serving uh, so always check those calories per scoop uh, so all scoops are not made equal check for fat and cholesterol 
Oh yeah, and definitely cholesterol is a big, big, big thing. You gotta check on those protein powders because if you do consume a lot of protein powders, then they're gonna have a lot of cholesterol, like eating those egg yolks. I remember seeing some protein brands having like 18, 20% of cholesterol for your daily recommended allowance, which is not good. It's not good to have that much cholesterol, so make sure you look out for the brand that has a lower amount of cholesterol in the protein powder. Uh, so now if you consider um, the type of flavor you want because you can't have protein powder that is flavorless or tastes like cardboard, that's understandable, that's fine, yeah, you want it to taste good. Uh, but look out for the sweeteners. Some have uh, different sweeteners and some have sugars. Uh, and some will be like 10 grams of carbs per scoop, some will be 4. So that that's that's something you should look for too. Make sure there's a balance of good taste versus a balance of not being uh, too, too many carbs in there or having too much aspartame. I think sucralose is okay. Uh, aspartame could be worse. Stevia. Stevia is a good uh, sweetener that's been around for less time but it's considered healthier. Let's consider the uh, timing of your protein powder consumption. It is recommended to take it before and after a workout. So uh, around like an hour before a workout is good to have protein powder. If you didn't eat or like if you did intermittent fasting, it's okay to have protein powder but not have breakfast and then say you go to work out at noon. That would be a good timing for you to use protein powder. And then within uh, 30 minutes after a workout, no more than an hour, but you highly recommend it immediately after workout to have protein powder. That way you recover better. Even eating a meal after workout too, but definitely the protein powder. So within 30 minutes of your workout, that should be enough time for most people to like shower, go home, and then have a protein powder. But when I go to gym, I usually try to have like one serving scoop in a container and then have water and then drink the water and then have that scoop and that works for me so it's definitely crucial definitely definitely crucial to have good protein powder within your uh with, by the time you finish your workout and don't wait too long because muscles gonna the muscle tissue is breaking down needs to recover and nutrients are drained so you need nutrients back into your system to for energy and for recovery uh so the other thing is uh true with protein powder as I mentioned, it has brain chain amino acids. It also has glutathione, GSH. It is known to be like the most water soluble antioxidant and it helps in the immune system part, preventing diseases. And uh, there's some studies about that, uh, although I haven't really gone into details, but there's never a zero risk when it comes to food, protein supplements. Uh, there's some kind of risk involved, but you can't have like a perfect diet you can't have perfect food there is always a risk involved with whatever you eat or choose i remember i had tried like a uh, protein brand i was in a place like that only had walmart and protein was available in that walmart only one brand and uh i, th I was like i never heard of this brand but it looks reputable it looks okay i mean it's not it looked online there wasn't like too much details about it but boy i remember it very clearly after uh, I had gotten sick. It was worse than food poisoning. Like w food poisoning, you feel fatigued, tired, and then you're gonna sit in the toilet for a while. But I had these really severe stomach cramps, so uh, I, which I never really had before uh, to that degree. I mean, I couldn't sleep. I, I just uh, whined all night and had to just curl up and uh, let it pass by and also spend time in the bathroom but it was terrible so be careful with the protein choices and remember that there's always some risk involved uh, so it's good to have reputable brands uh, I'm not gonna go into specific brands uh, I'll just recommend like reading reviews online I think bodybuilding.com does a good job of reviews uh, Amazon probably another choice for reviews but bodybuilding.com is probably the first choice for reading reviews about proteins um, 
and then you if you need specific uh, portions what you do you need specific portions for eating especially when you're trying to lose weight I do offer custom meal plans so you can message me on Instagram Rutcat Fitness R U T K T Fitness I have done meal planning for people before like I don't make the food I don't prepare the food I'll just write I'll take a week uh, like a spreadsheet and then I, I write down what you should eat during that week like break down uh, your meals into three or five or it depends like on your schedule sometimes even like two meals personally when I have meal plans for myself and I'm traveling and I need to make, get my nutrients enough with like the macronutrients I'll go to a buffet so I'll like skip breakfast of a buffet and then I'll light dinner uh, since a buffet will allow me to get as much as protein as I need without overpaying like getting uh, in Asia for example when I live in Asia meal portions are smaller prices are cheaper but you still have smaller meal portions so you have to even order two or three servings just to meet your needs for uh, protein and the macronutrients um, so yeah if you need custom meal plans I'm available for you to make them just message me on Instagram and we can go from there just make sure including that uh, you heard it on the podcast that way I know where you heard about it so thanks for listening and in the next episode I will discuss eating uh, on the go I will discuss uh, proper eating healthy diets for travelers for busy business people they're traveling for a high budget and a low budget since I've been traveling for over a year myself I'm familiar I can make recommendations for food in different countries what's healthy what's not how you should prepare uh, and like I said I'm, I can make it for high budgets and low budgets uh, of course if you're a business guy that's traveling you're gonna probably eat well in the hotels and and that's fine you know it feels great but then again it's like if you eat unhealthy you're gonna have to you might feel worse you're gonna gain weight you don't want to do that remember stay healthy guys and let's get abs <laughs>